Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Auto Defuel. Today with me, AJ and Jonas. This weekend we are in the Pyrenees to test the all new Audi SQ8. Is 435 horsepower and 900 Newton meters of torque enough to turn a 2.2 ton SUV sporty? Well, stick around and we'll find out together. First of all, the LED lights are standard, but you can upgrade them to the matrix LED lights, which do things like automatic uh, high beam adjustment and casting the light across uh, into the corner and uh, ensuring that the car coming in front of you isn't being dazzled. So they're very intelligent systems. And that also gives you the cascading daytime running light uh, come indicator LED strip. Interestingly as well, the head, uh, the high beam for the headlamp is lower down and it's a little bit blacked out. So initially the impression is that this is the main headlight and it's very slim and this just seems like a darker element, but I like that they've made this a little bit more subtle to make the front look very sleek, but in reality this entire section is the headlamp. Going further up, I also like how the hood of the of the engine uh, cover the comes a little bit further down over the top of the mask, this large uh, uh, the mask around the front grille. So it gives a very nice three-dimensional look as well. The SQ8 is five meters long and two meters wide, which means that it's a little bit shorter than the Q7, of course, but it's actually a bit wider than the Q7 as well. It weighs around 2,200 kilograms, which is a hefty amount. As standard, you get 21 inch rims for the wheels, uh, but you can optionally get them with 22 inches, like the ones we have here. I also like this dusted bronze gold finish. Very cool, very rally-like. If we peer inside that, you will also see that this car comes with the optional carbon ceramic disc brakes, huge discs. I mean, I think these discs are bigger than the rims on my car. And to stop those big discs, we have six piston calipers up front. You can also get them optionally painted in red if that, that tickles your fancy. And peering behind the whole wheel, we can also see that this has the air suspension. So the SQ8, uh, SQ8 comes as standard with the air suspension and the anti-tilt active uh, split roll bars. Now what the split roll bar means that, uh, well for example, let's say we're driving down the road and we're, taking a, we're making a left turn. There's a sharp left hand bend. What happens because it's a tall SUV, is that the, the SUV will start leaning on the outside wheels on the outside, so that would be the right side. But with the anti-tilt function and the air suspension, first of all, this air suspension becomes really stiff on all the all, on all the four wheels, so that that itself prevents the body roll a little bit. And then the anti-roll bar will push down on the outside wheel and give a little bit of slack on the inside wheel. That way you're kind of pushing out on the outside and giving a little bit of slack on the inside. And this way it remains very flat around corners and we can test this out once we're out on the road. At the top of the, uh, the windshield in the rear window is the spoiler. Body colored, but it is flanked by these glossy black inlays around the sides, rear windshield wiper the Audi logo over here. This section is again very classic quattro. You can also see the lights um, going all the way across the middle of the hatch, again emphasizing the width. And because of that sloping roof line, it does seem very squat, very wide, very sporty. So I think it, it achieves a very nice design overall that way. The SQ8 can do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.8 seconds. That's pretty impressive for a 2.2 ton SUV. So what makes it possible? Well, here it is, the heart of the beast. The SQ8 comes with the 4-liter V8 TDI turbo diesel engine. We've seen this before in the SQ7 as well. Pretty interesting engine. For example, this has a sequential turbo, a pair of 
turbos. One turbo which is running at lower RPMs and a second turbo which then activates at higher RPMs. But there is also an ele electric uh, compressor. So the compressor works to fill the gaps where the turbochargers don't have enough boost, therefore eliminating turbo lag. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. We post a lot of pictures from behind the scenes when we're filming our episodes. We put a lot of polls and questions so you can tell us what you want to see, what are your questions that you should have answered in the episode, and we will cater to those needs. Here we have the key for the SQ8. In comparison to the size of the car, this key is very slim and very sleek. So it's a bit interesting that it's contrasting. Of course, you have keyless entry. So now it's locked. You just come up close and touch the door handle and the door will unlock automatically. Again, I really like you know, how the B pillar is static because there is no frame for the window. And as you can see over here, you know, you have, um, it's a double glazing and this way it ensures more acoustic damping. The door feels heavy, there's a nice heft to it. It also has a nice sound as you close the door. But even if you don't, you know, the soft close will always ensure that the door is closed properly. The interior of this SQ8 is predominantly black, including the headliner. And since you have that sloping roof line, the windshield is not that big. So it does feel a bit dark in here. Although I can tell you the space in terms of width is fantastic. I have plenty of headroom. I can, I can really put my seat a lot higher if I wanted to anyway. So there is space, but just because of this dark color, it does feel a little bit, a little bit more hemmed in. The dashboard just really hugs itself around you. From the door through the front, it kind of has this one cohesive design line that curves around you. And everything is also kind of pointed towards the driver ever so slightly. This also comes as standard with the virtual cockpit. And we're quite familiar with this across other models in the VW group. But here as well, it's just taken up to 11. You have many different views that you can toggle between to have the map, for example, across the entire screen, or to have this combination with the map, the uh, this tachometer, digital readout, speed, and also your exit instructions. All right, now let's talk about the infotainment system. So apart from the heads up display, the virtual cockpit, we also have two screens right here and you can control the entire car with these two screens. And I really like this layout. The only thing that I don't like, and I'll, let me start off with that, is that it does leave quite a bit of fingerprints as you start using them, as you can see. But you know, you can't have everything. So. This system is, I think, very intuitive. It gives you a haptic feedback. So when you press, you can feel a little vibration and a click. It's very smooth to respond. Everything has a little bit of an animation. As you can see, if you just tap on it, it gives you a little bit of an animation. There's a lot of different features that you can select for the car and we can go into more details. Even things like having interior lighting it's really nice. You can see that it, there's many different hues. There's 30 different colors you can choose from. And it kind of lights up the entire cabin on the door and the dashboard and the foot wells with different colors. And you, know, you can select which contours you want to have it. And you can also select which color. And there's, oh, there's 30 different colors you can choose. There's also a really nice navigation system. So you have Google Maps with the satellite view. So you can easily um, you know, zoom in, change the orientation, and you have a really nice 3D satellite view of the terrain and the, the landscape. And we've been using this to find some beautiful locations to shoot our introduction B-roll and just to go driving. So this navigation is also very intuitive because you have it, you have commands on so many different areas here, of course, but on your virtual cockpit. And Jonas, if you look at the heads up display as well, you can see uh, a lot of uh, information with that. All right, let's take a look in the back seat. The door opens really wide and it's also um, fairly tall. So easy access to the back seat. Getting inside is also fairly easy. 
thanks to this SUV ground clearance that it, you know, the extra ground clearance that it has, you don't have to stoop down to climb inside. There's a lot of uh, gap here since the wheelbase is fairly long, so you don't have to kind of navigate and squeeze between a wheel arch. There's nothing uh, impeding into the interior space. This seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot eight or 1.7 meters. And yeah, I have plenty of knee room. I can slide my feet under the front seat because the, uh, this, the front seat is on kind of like this, uh, this, this platform. Um, right here, you can see this extra height. Even if the front seat is completely in the bottommost position, there is still enough space for me to slide my feet under. Annette down here, integrated head restraints for the front seat, so you kind of have to appear from either side. We don't have the panoramic sunroof, and I would definitely recommend you should get it. There's a lot of black inside the cabin. Even though the materials are nice, this color just makes it feel a little bit tighter than it really is. The rear seat is also fairly adjustable. You can slide it forward all the way up to liberate more space in the trunk. You can also recline and change the angle of the backrest to make it more comfortable for you. There are also vents here in the B pillar, along with a third and fourth climate zone for the individual left and right passengers here in the back. Let's take a look inside the trunk. Of course, because of this roof line, we have lost quite a bit of trunk space. An automatic tailgate. The portal shelf also retracts automatically, which is a nice touch. Well, in reality, you do lose out a little bit in the height because of this sloping roof line, but you still get 605 liters of boot space in this uh, current configuration. But you can, as we saw, slide the back bench forward. Then you can also topple the seats and then you can even get up to 1755 liters of boot space. But one omission that I find quite surprising are there's no switches for me to be able to tumble the back bench. So which means I have to go all the way around. So, and in this way, you do get a very flat loading area so you can carry long items like maybe your cupboard from Ikea. All right, let's start off by driving up here in the mountains in the Pyrenees because this is where the SQ8 is trying to show off and prove itself that it is a worthy sports SUV. So in order for me to allow the SUV to set itself up to achieve this, I'm going to go into the drive select mode and go into dynamic. Now, many things have changed. The air suspension is much more stiffer. The throttle response is really sharp. The eight speed Tiptronic torque converter auto box shifts up much later so that it gives me all that torque. That electric compressor is always charging so that it can punch and provide extra boost to the uh, and spool up the first turbocharger and then the steering is also significantly heavier. So all of these things try to help out with the driving performance. So let's put it to the test. I can also take control with these paddle shifters. Although I must say these paddle shifters seem a bit small and um, they're, not that, they're not that nice to touch. For the steering wheel, which I think is really beautiful and has such a great grip, the paddle shifters somehow let it down just a little bit. The steering on the other hand as well, it just doesn't give me enough feedback to be able to tackle high speeds on these narrow corners, it doesn't give me the confidence. Yes, in the sport dynamic mode, it does become significantly heavier, but it's just, it feels a little bit artificial to me. And I said the same thing when I drove the standard Q8 uh, back in, I think, summer of last year, around the same time last year in Chile, in the Atacama Desert. So perhaps not the apt place to test um, a, 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 a stylish SUV, but even there I was quickly able to say that the steering, while it's got a nice, pretty decent rack, it's not quick, but it's, for this size of an SUV, it's fairly sharp and responsive. That rear axle steering really helps out. I would recommend you need to get the rear axle steering. Trust me, in the city it really helps out, and out on these kind of twisty roads, you need that to make the car feel much more nimble. 
when I try to push it around these corners, that anti-roll or anti-tilt stabilization system and that um, air suspension really work. We saw that out on the twisty mountain roads. Um, the QA SQ8 is a bit of a mixed bag. It definitely has a great chassis. Definitely has, uh, with that four wheel steering, is very agile. But the performance was a little bit underwhelming. But of course, it's also very important to consider how this large SUV behaves out in the city where there's smaller tighter spaces that this has to navigate through. And here again, the, the rear wheel steering really helps out. So I do recommend that. I think if you're gonna be spending this much money anyway, that's an option you shouldn't miss out on. This car has so many uh, assistance systems and a lot of technology, it's really fantastic. They have uh, this connected car kind of a system where right now my car will be monitoring the spaces around me. It can even th check things like if there's parking spaces available as I drive along, other things like, of course, traffic and weather conditions or road conditions, and then it will upload this and uh, to a central server and the other Audi cars will be able to download that information. And then that car will say, okay, hey, you wanna go to the city center? There's a few parking sp spaces available that we have found, you can use that. Or this place has just had a, um, you know, a, a traffic jam, let's avoid it and it will navigate around that. And this kind of a connected car technology, I think is really fantastic. So that way, <clears throat> this car uses all those sensors, like I mentioned, so all those cameras and radar sensors around to be able to accomplish this. So let's set the speed limit again. It says it notices that I'm on the highway. It's 110 kilometers per hour. It has set the speed. It is maintaining the distance. You can see that it's also steering for me as we come around. It will also notice if there's a larger, more complex bend coming up and it can even slow down to ensure that you have a very composed, um, you know, uh, you know, you're not going too fast when you enter the corner. We can also go into the driving mode here and go into the efficiency mode. Now this engine has a lot of uh, technology to make it more efficient. It can coast, it can deactivate certain cylinders if required and just take over barely and the gearbox will also shift to uh, the top gear which is an eight and then you get a lot of, uh, you, get, you get much better mileage. Right now on the highway, we've just started off so it's still a bit higher, but we can uh, check in a minute and uh, we'll see how it goes. But on the whole, it's very calm and composed. That sound actuator is also deactivated now in the efficiency mode, so the engine is very hushed. The overall cabin is also very hushed as well because the, um, the sound insulation is really good. They've put a lot of sound deadening throughout the cabin. Even the windshields have uh, extra acoustic damping. And that, in that way, you barely hear any wind noise. You do hear a little bit of tire noise, but um, it's not unbearable. Let's summarize today's episode. First of all, I hope you guys enjoyed the film. Jonas and I really love filming in this incredible landscape here in the Pyrenees Mountains. So, the Audi SQ8. What is my verdict? Well, with prices starting at 103,000 euros, it does seem a little bit expensive. But if you put it into perspective with some of its rivals, including its siblings like the Porsche Cayenne, then it's not so bad. Of course, if you start adding the carbon ceramic brakes, some of the other uh, advances in the uh, technology like the adaptive LED matrix lights, then that price goes up significantly. But still, I think it's not that bad. Of course, it's more expensive than the Tuareg. So, things I didn't like about the SUV, 
I think would be the drivetrain. Yes, 900 Newton meters sounds like a lot on paper, but somehow on the road, it wasn't giving me that accelerating performance that I was hoping for. The gearbox as well, the eight speed shifts really smoothly, but doesn't have that sharpness that I would like to have from a sporty SUV. Similarly, the steering is also a little bit numb. Yes, you have a little bit more weight in the dynamic mode, but I couldn't get that much feedback and the paddle shifters were not really engaging either. But on the plus side, you have a lot of great hardware in the chassis and suspension, like the adaptive air dampers, the anti-tilt functions for the split roll anti-roll bars, the rear axle steering, and the Quattro with the limited slip differential. Overall, if that engine was a little bit better, I think it would have been a cracker of a uh, sports SUV. Rumor has it that there will be a petrol version sometime next year, and then maybe I can revisit this and see if I feel differently. But the things I do like, actually, there's plenty. I think this car is packed with some of the best technology that we can see trickling down into some of the other smaller and cheaper affordable Audi cars. Some things like the connected system, that haptic feedback touchscreen is also really fantastic. Very intuitive. I think currently one of the best on the market. It's also very comfortable, very relaxing to drive and a very smart car overall. So in the end, if you like the way it looks, and it does look pretty stunning, and you're not really somebody who's gonna be very critical about having very sporty dynamics from a 2.2 ton SUV, then sure, why not? But if you still want this technology and you don't really care about performance, then this is not gonna really meet your needs anyway. Stick to the regular Q8. That's my verdict. Let me know what you guys think. Put it down in the comments below. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and join us on Facebook and Instagram as well. We take a lot of pictures behind the scenes so you can see what we're up to. Plus we post stories and polls and questions and you can interact with us. Tell us what you wanna know about the episode and we can cater to your needs when we film. Thanks for watching. It's Jonas and me signing off and we'll see you guys next time.